Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. I'm continuing with the 148th scale house this week because it's so close to being finished and um, I don't know about you but when a project gets that close to being finished I just want it done. I want to see the realisation of my vision and in the case of this one it is a vision that I'm realising. I have a story as I've probably mentioned before that goes along with it and I need to add certain details to the house to make the story work. I have started doing some distressing on the outside of the house because it looked far too clean and new and I'm going to confess it's not going too well. I'm not a master of distressing. I really feel like I could in some ways do with Aira from Bentley House Minis here to um, point the way but I'm going to persevere and I will be doing some more distressing on the outside of the house um, before the project is done but I'm actually going to focus today on the interior. Now in my last video that was on the interior I was focusing on the living room which was well the only main room that was unfurnished but I was aware that it didn't quite match up to my expectation so I've been out and bought some more kits. Well when I say I've been out I went online and I bought some more kits off Petite Properties and um, those are what I'm going to be making today. These are the kits that I'm going to be working with. The crib you've probably seen before if you've seen some of my other videos still hasn't been made it will be done today but these are the new ones I got I got the china cabinet and a um, coffee table to go in the living room I've got a blanket box which will go in the nursery and I've got a rustic bench which I think will be perfect to sit on my porch and then I bought a plant stand now I bought the plant stand and I'm not sure where I'm going to put it but I have this um, anchoring to make a dead plant so that it looks like it was just forgotten about it may go in the living room it may not I don't know but I'm going to be making that as well so that's six kits that I'm going to make and finish to suit the various places where they're going to go. Now the china cabinet, I know I'm going to have to at least try and put something in it. I'm not sure what, but well, I'll find something. Now I've begun by putting together the little rustic bench. Now I've coloured that as I do most of my 148 scale pieces with a alcohol marker. Now this is um, warm grey which is a quite brown grey but I want it to look like old worn wood that's been outside for quite some time and I'm going to put a bit of dirtying on it in a minute but to go with this on my porch I want a stack of um, wood and what I've got here are some bits of some tiny little branches from my garden well branches twigs even um, they've actually been in the house for quite some time I collected a load for a previous project and I found them recently and all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start gluing them together I want to make a little wood pile but they're not all going to be um, nice even shapes and things like that so I'm just going to stack them together as best I can and then 
onto the um, porch. This is just one of these sort of little extra bits that I think I can um, add. And all I'm doing is I'm just using a bit of my usual glow and just sort of um, pushing them together. I'm not really being too fussy about it. I'm going to build it up once these have started to stick a bit. I'll start making the pile a bit higher. And you'll probably find that they'd be the equivalent of having quite a large log that would need splitting again to put it on the fire. But um, it's just something. It'll just give a little bit of interest to that quite empty porch area. I have finished my little wood pile. Um, it's not quite dry yet. You can still see the glow. That's the white bits. Bring it up here a bit. Now what I did to make it easier to move because these little bits of wood are quite um, fragile. I've stuck it to a little tiny bit of um, card. I just took a little tiny piece of card, just a little corner bit, and I've just stuck that underneath and then um, I will dirty that all up a bit. So maybe it'll look like somebody's put something down if it's visible. It might not even be visible in the end. But that's going to go aside to dry and then um, they'll be distressed to go in onto the porch. The next piece kit I've completed is my little coffee table. Now because this is, although this is supposed to be a abandoned house, um, in that nobody's lived in it, it's not abandoned in that nobody really cares. If that makes sense. It'll make sense when I get to my storytelling. Anyway, I like putting little pieces around so it actually looks like somebody still bothers a little bit. And I want to put some kind of a little mat on the table. Now ideally the mat would be a similar shape to the table which is this nice oval shape but I'm not even going to attempt to um, cut something out that small. But what I've got here is I've got a scrap of um, cheesecloth. Now I have put some glue on the back of the edge of the fabric and I can't think what the word for it is. It's the um, the nice finished edge that you get on the sides of fabric. And it, what it is on here, the fabric is actually um, thicker woven than it is on the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece off from that and put a little um, mat on there with that. It's not a lot, but it's just something that sort of adds another layer of detail. And that's what I'm trying to do, is add as much little details as possible without driving myself absolutely crazy. Or spending a fortune, because there are people that make things in this scale, and they're absolutely fantastic. I don't know how they do it, because although I like this scale, I have not got that much patience. The cloth is now on my little coffee table. It's not much, but it is, like I said, another layer of detail. Now, while I was messing with a bit of cheesecloth, I um, added a cloth to the butler tray, which is going to be going up into the bedroom. Again, it's something that probably will never be noticed by anybody, but I'll know it's there. And then I've added to my um, vintage suite, my sofa, and um, chair for my living room. Now these are antimacasters. Antimacasters, um, for those of you that are old enough, you may remember older relatives, even back, you know, when you were young, would have these um, cloths that they put over the back of their upholstered furniture. Now. These are antimacasters. Sometimes they were just plain, sometimes they were embroidered, sometimes they were lacy. It all depended upon the person. Now, antimacasters came about because at the end of the 19th and the early 20th century, men put some really interesting things on their hair. 
and one of those was Macastor oil. Now, I'm not 100% sure what it was, what it was made from and all that, but it was pretty nasty stuff and it was coloured. And so if they lent their head against your nice upholstery, the oil could um, damage it. So the anti macaster came along. And that is a very sort of vintage thing that um, I just couldn't resist adding to my um, little model. What I've got here is the pieces for the china cabinet. Now I've laid them all out and I've given them a coat of marker. And I see a bit that was missed, but we'll just touch that in. Now, this is a slightly different piece to some that I've made before. And so I'm going to film making it. I don't film making all the kits because I've done quite a few. So if you actually look at the other videos in my 148th um, playlist, you'll see videos where I actually focus more on building the kits. But there are so many kits from Petite Properties and um, I could spend absolute hours just showing you how to make all of them but the truth is their instructions are pretty much bang on. You do not need anything other than those instructions apart from glue and tweezers. Tweezers are always a very good idea that's just because everything's so small. Now, I'm going to start off with my shelves and I need to put a teeny bit of glue along this tab at the back. And it doesn't need to be a lot. Um, depending upon your glue, you'll end up using a lot less than you think you will. And then that's got to go into there. And the first one, it is very important that it is truly at right angles because you're going to attach the front leg to it. Now I'm only going to attach the first one because I'm going to make a bit of a modification. Now, most of these china cabinets in real life either have a wallpapered interior or they have mirror. So I've got some mirror card and what I'm going to do is once I'm happy that this is in properly, which it isn't, that's better, it fits better now, is I'm going to stick the pieces of this in between the shelves. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to um, apply a bit more glue to the backing piece. I'm going to put my strip of mirror card down there and I'm going to give that a few moments to dry and then I'm going to trim it off and then I'm going to repeat that all the way up and when I've got up to there I'll come back and um, show you the next step. So the shelves and my mirror addition are in. Now while I was um, putting it together shelf by shelf I also added some contents, some large seed beads to be vases the tiniest little chip of a gemstone that looks like a really big rock of some description and a little metal bead that I found which I thought might look like one of those old silver tea caddies that um, you do still find. Now the next bit to do is to attach the acetate. Now the acetate is going to be the glass of the cabinet and I've had to cut it out and score along the lines. Now, I'm not sticking this with glue. As per the instructions, I'm using double-sided tape. Now, this is a extra tacky, extra strong double-sided tape that is great because um, 
generally sticks most things and it doesn't fall apart. So that's just my personal preference. It just says double sided tape on the um, back. Now, the only problem I always have is in getting the back off the tape. So what I'm going to do, no, see, it's trying to grab already. I'm going to put that piece in to the um, corner and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to try and get the back off this other piece of tape. Now you see, if I'd been um, clever, what I would have done is I would have applied the tape and then I would have taken a little tiny corner up so I could just do that with it. That's what they do when they do the card making, what's it, um, card making um, demonstrations. Well, either that or they use um, a special tape that um, comes away easier. Now, I've got my glass fitted to my um, cabinet. The next step is to repeat the process with um, this piece and um, it will then look like that. Now I'm going to go and do that off screen because I've got to cut more tape and um, it's going to be even fiddlier sticking it down. So I've got the um, wood in place and it fits pretty good I think and now I get to stick um, the top on and I do apologize if you just heard my um, stomach go rumbling it has been fed but obviously it's feeling left out so I'll put some glue on there and I will put a little bit of glue onto the back of there and then I'm going to put my fingers straight my fingers straight in the glue in fact what I should be doing is fitting this piece onto here like so yay it works and if I do sound surprised well it's because I'm always surprised when I actually manage to um, achieve something without making a mess. I am pretty good at um, fiddling about with things to actually make them work in the end. Now the last piece is um, the front leg support and again glue along one edge and then this has to be attached behind there like so and it should be in the middle so I need to I think that does it and I think that gives us a really pretty little china cabinet which is going to be the perfect addition to my um, living room. The next kit that I've um, put together is the blanket box. Now, yeah, I've glued the lid down. I could have left it open and put something in for toys, but to be fair, I don't think I really needed to. So I've just glued it down and um, that's ready to go into my nursery. Now, with that in mind, I've actually done something that um, I've been planning to do for quite a long time. I've put books on my shelf. Now, I did this kit at the start of the year, something like that. 
and now it's got books on it. I made the books by using some mat board, just a scrap off cut of mat board and I just cut a strip and then cut it down. I've coloured the spines and obviously a couple of the sides with um, my alcohol markers, glued them together and stuck them in place. So I've now got books on my shelves and I'm really really pleased about that. And that of course is another piece that's going to go into the nursery along with that. Moving on to the plant stand. I still don't know where it's going to go but I've made it and um, I've given it a bit of a um, dead plant look. I've actually finished it in the colour that I've been using for the living room furniture um, but I'm not sure that it's going to go there yet and I've used one of the same beads that I used in my china cabinet to give me a nice pot. The plant is um, copier paper and all I did was I coloured one piece of one bit of it, goes through because the copier, copier paper's nice and thin and the alcohol markers are really juicy and then I've cut off really thin pieces. I've glued in and then cut them down to size so I get the look of a dead plant without too much hassle. I'm just going to um, interject with this one. Um, this is one of the pieces that I made in the living room video and um, I wanted to use it, it's supposed to be a dumb waiter but I wanted to use it as a whatnot. And obviously if it's a whatnot, it needs something on it. Well, I had cut this little bird off of a Christmas decoration that I'm turning into a piece for my 112th scale doll's house. And um, I decided, well, though he's a bit big for 148th scale, he kind of looks sort of this kind, the right sort of scale to be one of those oversized ornaments that people would sometimes have. So um, I've coloured in the bit that was white where I'd cut him off with a black permanent marker. I've glued him in place and then he just makes another little um, added detail for my um, scene. The final new kit that I've made is the rocking cradle. Now this is a sweet little piece. I was going to have a go at making my own and I tried to figure it out. I was going to have a go at making one in 1 12th scale and then scale it down accordingly. But to be fair, the price of the Petite Properties kits is such that it's hardly worth the hassle sometimes. So I do go and look there and see what they've got before I decide to scratch build something. So I think the only thing I've actually scratch built for the interior of the um, house was the kitchen sink and the fridge. Oh, and a wardrobe. I did a wardrobe for the bedroom, didn't I? And those little bedside tables. Oh, so there's a few bits, but um, I wanted a rocking cradle. And here it is, quite simple and um, I put a little bit of fabric in the bottom to sort of make it look like there's some kind of um, mattress or something in there but um, that's ready now. And here we have all the pieces that I've made today. Obviously my little wood pile was not a kit but all the others are um, the petite properties kits that I showed you at the start and of course I've added to some other pieces as well just to give them a little bit extra in the way of detail and I may go back and add a little um, wire aerial to the top of my um, TV because well we all remember those days don't we or rather those of us of a certain age remember the days when 
you could have a little bunny ear aerial on the top of your TV. So there they are. The rest of the furniture along with the living room pieces that I've got to glue into place and I'm going to go off and um, my next job is going to be gluing these in place and then I can get to um, sticking the house in place and um, really making it fit onto its base and I'm really pleased with that because as I think I said at the beginning of this video I'm at the point with this project now where I really want it finished I want to see my vision come together and um, I'd like to do that sooner rather than later before I get wrapped up in Christmas things because it's that time of year folks whether we like it or not if you've enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe and until next time bye